So, welcome to the first part of the slash tutorial. And basically, today you'll be making the texture of the slash, and then you'll be importing it into Blender to see how it looks and whether you need to like make adjustments and all of that. So I guess let's just get straight into the video and show the whole process and some of my explanations. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is first go to UV editing tab. And then after that, we're gonna get this cube here and this uh, area which shows the UV editing area. So what we're gonna do is click this cube, click X and then delete. And afterwards, we're gonna create our circle by clicking Shift A and then click our circle here. Then we need to go to editing tab, click A, click one so that we can go to vertices mode and then click E to extrude. And then after that, we need to click S so then we can extrude inwards and then we're gonna click G and then Z so then we can move this circle up. And then afterwards, uh, we need to basically UV unwrap this. So what we're gonna do is select everything. We're gonna click UV and then light map pack, which should be able to create all of these squares. Afterwards, we need to go to face mode by clicking three, select one of these faces and make sure one of these faces um, glow up like this. And then after that, click UV, and then click Follow Active Quads. And you should be able to get this really long line of squares. And then after that, um, we need to click A to select everything. We're gonna click UV. Um, make sure that this is checked, uh, the constraint to image bounds. So then we can basically keep all of the UV um, inside this square area. So we're gonna basically click S to scale it down and we're gonna click G to move this air area around. We're gonna click S to basically scale this and since mine is like really squashed horizontally, what I'm gonna do is click S and then X. So then we can scale this horizontally. There we go. And after that, uh, we're going to do SY so then we can scale it vertically and there is a tiny gap right here so what I'm going to do is select all of these vertices um, by just holding and dragging and after that I'm going to do G and then Y so then I can basically move all these vertices in the vertical direction after that I'm going to click A I'm going to try to center this um, in the center so what I'm going to do is click G Try to make this in the center as much as possible and then click S and then X to scale horizontally. So there is this tiny gap. So what we're gonna do is try to center again. Click G, X to move it uh, horizontally. Try to make it as perfect as possible in the center and then click S, X. And after that, make sure there aren't any gaps here. It's very important, um, so yeah. And there is a tiny gap. Uh, I don't think it's too much of a bother though. So we're just gonna leave it like that. So afterwards, uh, we're gonna go back in this area. I'm gonna click tab to go to object mode or you can actually select it from here. We're gonna click the modifier tab here, add modifier, then the mirror thing. And then afterwards, we're gonna unselect X and click Z. So now that you, sh now that you have that, um, it should look like a UFO. And then we're going to do Command A and let's do right click Whoop, if I can and then click Shade Smooth and we're basically done. Okay, so now we're finished with the slash mesh. Right now we'll be creating our texture. So what you guys need to do right now is go to my description or the YouTube comments to find my Google Drive link. And right now uh, we'll be clicking the image templates folder. So after clicking it, um, you guys will be presented these two images. And basically these are like the masking images where we'll be drawing or painting our texture on it. So right now I'm gonna click this image because I like this masking image. And if you're on mobile, um, you'll see these three dots and basically you need to save this image by clicking the semi copy and then save image. So let's see, save image. And if you are on a computer, I'm pretty sure there's a button somewhere, probably the three dots where you can save the image or download it.
So now we're finished getting the image or downloading it. We need to open an art program. So today I'm going to be using Ibis Paint because it's very accessible, free and all that. And it has a lot of great tools. So right now I'm going to click on my gallery, going to click the plus button, import picture, and I'm going to select my masking image. And here I'm going to click cancel. So now that we have our masking image, we need to create a layer by clicking the plus button and then the clicking button, I mean clipping button. And after that, uh, we need to start painting. So what our goal is, is to create like a really bright color right here. So actually I'm gonna change my color. We're gonna create a really bright color here. And then we're gonna try to transition to a darker color. And the reason why we're doing this is because um, here will be like where the, the color will be like on the outer edge of the slash mesh. And as we go towards down this way, uh, we're basically creating color in the area like innermost of the slash mesh, if you know what I mean. So right now, actually I'm gonna go over here, click this button so I can see which parts are transparent. And basically, uh, I'm just gonna be like, um, basically painting here. And if you're on Ibis Paint, you can actually hold on the screen and color pick and I'll I'm just gonna like add some colors and try to make um, this look really interesting and if you don't know how to get the brush on ibis paint you just have to click this button and you get all these brushes and let's say you didn't buy the ibis paint um, version um, and you only have like the free version of ibis paint um, you have to watch an ad to get all of these brushes so uh, one cool tip um, is you can actually create um, layers and you can actually change the mode. And what you can do is click like multiply layer mode. And what it does is it darkens like all of these colors. Like it doesn't like um, make this completely gray as it's supposed to do, but it darkens. And let's say you really want to brighten the color. You can actually change this to like add and it'll brighten this color by a lot as you can see but for now I'm actually gonna make this multiply I'm actually gonna go back to my normal layer and I'm just gonna try to like um, paint on this And while you guys are like making this texture, um, you guys are probably not gonna um, make it look really good in the beginning because there's a lot of like just trial and error when creating these textures. And it's just a, like a lot of testing. Like I know uh, when I started this, I think I had to reach redo this like over 10 times, which is pretty ridiculous. But in the end, it was pretty worth it because my slash mesh uh, looked pretty good in the end. So just gonna paint around here. I wanna add a bit more um, bright brightness here. Actually, no, a bit more darker color. And then what you can do is actually go to this layer with the multiplier layer mode and actually darken this. So I'm actually gonna get dark color and just lightly just darken this area. And I think this looks good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is use a different brush and actually gonna create a layer here. Click clipping node so that we can clip on this black image. And what I'm gonna do is get some brushes. Just find like a random one that looks really cool. For this one, if you're on um, Ibis Paint, I'm gonna be using, shoot, where is it? What the? Okay, here, pasta. This one, because like, I thought it looked really cool. So what I'm gonna do is like do something like this. Oh, actually wrong layer. I'm um, just gonna undo this. I'm gonna click this layer. Just gonna like add a bunch of weird things here. And what I'm gonna do is erase some parts um, so I can, because I don't want this to be my slash mesh, um, but I also wanna add this randomness in here. So it makes this slash mesh look much more interesting. 
actually gonna make this multiply mode and just see how I'm gonna do. You can also use like the smudge tool um, so you can like smudge stuff and let's see maybe E T race well and let's see honestly this doesn't look that great so what I'm gonna do is actually like kind of like lower this opacity so it has some effect but not not too much if you know what I mean and then actually I'm gonna go back to my um, pasta brush and just add a bit more texture and basically do a bit more smudging actually yeah a bit of smudging and a bit, a bit of like erasing And once you're done, uh, we can actually go to the filter. But actually before that, we need to merge all of these layers. And before you guys like merge all these layers, you guys have to make sure that you are satisfied with this texture because there's no going back. So after you just merge all these layers, I'm gonna click the filter. And we're gonna first, you can like adjust the color however you want, but I'm just gonna go over here and see what I can do to make this look a bit more interesting. So let's see. I wonder what relief does. Seems interesting. Ooh, okay, this looks interesting. So I think I'm gonna use this because it actually kind of looks cool. You can like brighten areas. Ooh, okay. The only problem I don't like about this is the brightness is really high. So let's see, what can we do here? Highlight size? I do? Oh, okay, you can even change the color. Okay, that's interesting. And then let's see, smoothness. That one's fine. Height. I think it looks good. And I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. So now you have this, we're actually gonna go to transform if you're on Ibis Paint, and we're gonna check the slash mesh. So just click the polar coordinates and basically you'll see the slash. And if you're satisfied with this, then we can move on to the next step. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. So I'm gonna go click original, click X, and then save as transparent PNG. Make sure it is transparent PNG or else you will get like a complete white background and you click save as PNG. Okay, so now we're finished with our texture. We need to basically test our texture inside Blender to see if it works. So what we're gonna do is go to the shading editor and then we're gonna click new. And to go to the shading editor, you just have to click this button, this tab, and then to create the material, you just have to click new here like this. So now that we created our material, um, first, we're actually going to delete this principal BSDF. Um, I'm going to create a mix shader. I'm going to attach it right here. Um, we're going to get our image. We're going to attach this color right here. We're actually also going to attach it right here. I'll explain it in a while how it works. Um, I'm going to add the color ramp down here. Shift D this to duplicate. And then let's see, after that, I think this should be it. So basically now we gotta get our image here. So we're gonna click open. We're gonna find our slash texture and then open it right here. Oh, actually almost done. And then actually I forgot, but we need to add a transparent BSDF because we need to get rid of all this um, black blob to create our slash. So I'm going to do Shift A, search, and find our transparent BSDF. So I'm going to attach it right here. And after that, you need to go to blend mode and change this opaque to alpha blend. So now that we have that, this black area is still like visible. So the reason is because of this coloring. 
So what's happening is that here we have our color. Um, basically, it's getting a color, attaching the color ramp, we're putting a shader. And this is where it's going to create our color. So we actually remove this. You can't really see that. So with this, now we can see our color. But what FAC does is it's like our masking image where we want to put our color on top of it, just like how we did it in Ibis Paint. So basically, if you uh, move this black and I'll put this white area right here, wow, you can see the slash. And the reason is because basically this white um, marker is kind of like um, the color which indicates where the image should be showing its color. In black is like where it shouldn't show the color. So we actually move this black really close. We can see this slash texture. But if you actually move this white area in the other um, place, then it actually shows this other part of the image, not this slash area. So that's why I have to like reverse this um, to show the slash. You guys can like test this out. Uh, so it'd probably be easier to understand how it works than my explanation. And after that, uh, we need to test the color. So actually we're going to be exporting this black and white, preferably, because uh, you want to like custom your, customize your slashes in Roblox Studio and change the color there. So we're going to have to keep this black and white to make it simple. So I'm actually going to like test the color to see if it looks good. And yeah, so white, uh, we're going to actually like change this color, make it like, actually we're going to keep it white. I think that looks good. And then we're going to click here and we're going to change this color, maybe like blue. I think this looks good. And we're going to drag this here. Actually, I kind of want it like this color, really bright blue. And then we're going to put a plus sign to add another marker. And you can like add a bunch more colors here. I'm gonna make this all the way up here. So we can um, basically make this more unique. And what this does is uh, basically adds color um, based on like the brightness of the color. So since white is like, um, like ridiculously bright, and actually if you, um, okay, wait, let's see. You guys don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show you this. So RGB to black and white. And basically you can see how this color is like really bright white. So because of, of this, uh, we can adjust this color um, by actually having our marker here um, to change this outer area. But if you actually wanna change the color back here, you need to put a marker um, in the back area so you can change this color. And you can actually kind of see that um, because in this example, I have the dark blue right here and you can see there's the dark blue in the back. And that's basically it. And yeah, if you guys have any questions on like making this slash texture and all that, uh, feel free to join my Discord and hopefully I'll be there to help. I can't really guarantee it, but if there's like any technical issues, um, I'll try to answer it uh, with my uh, with the best I can. And that's basically it for part one. Yeah.